Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. And today I'm going to talk to you about a subject which I believe all of us know to a certain extent, but also where we have questions and that's our hydrosalpings. The question which we know is, do we need to treat the hydrosalpings before IVF? And I think there's a resounding yes there. And we are certain that if you do not treat the hydrosalpings, pregnancy rates will be lower. Now, if you do a salpingectomy, what have we been told? We've been told that if you do a salpingectomy, then you may interfere with the blood flow and in fact get lower number of oocytes or head towards an earlier menopause. So exactly this paper on RBO online tended to address it and it said in relation to IVF where does the treatment of hydrosalpings lie? So if you have a look at what are the types of treatment of the hydrosalpings people predominantly have used laparoscopic salpingectomy or they've done a laparotomy or they've done salpingostomy of opening the tubes or they've occluded the tubes proximally or aspirated it. So what did this review look at? It looked at what would be the response after treatment of hydrosalpings and ovarian response and also pregnancy outcome. And they were also looking at a comprehensive literature review which looked at effect of hydrosalpings on IVF outcome and hydrosalpings before IVF treatment. So now if you look at either removing the tube or tubal clipping, this study says that there was no difference between number of oocytes retrieved between salpingectomy and doing a tubal clipping. And it seems like the live birth rates were very much the same. Now if you look at hysteroscopic tubal occlusion and that's e short, there was only one study which looked at occlusion may have a lower implantation rates. Salpingectomy versus ultrasound aspiration and again one randomized controlled trial and one observational study found no difference in the number of oocytes or transferred embryos. With sclerotherapy again, it seemed to be similar. So what are we looking at? They looked at salpingectomy versus the other non-salpingectomy methods. And it seemed that salpingectomy seemed to give the best chance of pregnancy, though in other studies, the success rates were very similar in all the aspects. So in 40 years, what have we learned in 40 years of IVF? What have we learned? I, I think that we can say that a widely used opinion that you would disrupt the blood flow, I think we'll have to abandon. And I don't think removing hydrosalpings interferes significantly with ovarian function. We certainly know that if you leave a hydrosalpings in place, you're reducing the implantation rate by studies in almost 50% of cases. What does this hydrosalping fluid contain? It contains something similar, dissimilar or completely different from a blastocyst media culture. So its pH is higher, it contains less elements and it seems to have a deleterious effect. And it also we feel that it affects ovarian and uterine blood flow having a hydrosalping. So if you had a look at this meta-analysis and the meta-analysis basically went on to say that if you remove a, a, a hydrosalpings, if you do a salpingectomy, then there's no effect on oocyte numbers, the stimulation dose or the FSH dose and the live birth rate was higher in the salpingectomy group. They again did not see any difference whether you clip the tubes or you do a salpingectomy and pregnancy rates were very similar. If you looked at hysteroscopic tubal occlusion and e I think there's a general consensus now e should not be used 
pregnancy rates were lower compared to a salpingectomy and Ishore may cause pelvic pain and persistent pelvic pain can occur in almost 4.2 cases and in some countries it has been withdrawn from use and in this meta-analysis it's demonstrated a slightly lower chance of pregnancy. Ultrasound again I think you can use it but the only problem is when do you aspirate it and the fluid can fill up into the hydrosalpings quite fast and that's one of the reasons why I think a very few people would use drainage of hydrosalpings with antibiotics. You can try new constructive surgery and in fact results are good provided you've got a very small hydrosalpings and you do a, a neosalpingostomy but pregnancy rates are quite low around 13 percent and you look at mild tubal disease and pregnancy rates are reasonably good. Recurrence rate of hydrosalpings reaches almost 77 percent and the risk is of an ectopic pregnancy which can be from anything between 2.5 and 16.5 percent. So in conclusion this meta-analysis can give us an, a certain answer. It says that you remove the tube or you do a salpingectomy, you do not reduce ovarian response and treating of a hydrosalpings is certainly associated with a higher birth rate. So even though it is a very simple question where we knew the answer that you have to remove hydrosalpings, we kept on fearing whether the blood flow would get reduced, the ovary would respond in a worse manner and early menopause would come. I think these are going to be proved wrong. Thank you very much. If you do like this talk, please like the page and share the talk. Thank you.